the king! Hey everybody, Vestmore here, and today we're taking another look at Mordhau, the competitive medieval slasher that came out last week. I've been having an absolute blast with this game, it's my favourite thing at the minute, and I think at around the time of recording this, I've racked up about 80 hours on the game, and over the course of that time, I've improved a lot. So I figured today I'd bring you guys a video that lists off a bunch of tips and tricks that I feel will help beginner and intermediate players improve their game. If you find this video helpful, leave a like, and if you have any tips and tricks of your own, do be sure to leave those in the comments down below. But enough talking, let's get to crusading. Now my first tip is a really important one. It's one that a lot of beginner and even some intermediate players don't do, and it will instantly improve your game if you work on it. And that's make use of good footwork. I see a lot of players who just rush in with reckless abandon and get themselves killed. While playing aggressively is certainly a good tactic at times, a lot of the time staying at the edge of your opponent's range is the best place you can be. Maintaining that range allows you to be better prepared for any combat trickery that your opponent might use, be them feints, morphs, drags or excels. It also allows you to sidestep certain attacks such as tightly arced overheads and thrusts, allowing you to then step in with a quick counterattack. Obviously, that being said, it's good to mix up your footwork so that you don't become predictable. Good footwork is certainly something that takes practice. I'm not perfect myself, but it's definitely one of the more important factors in most of my duels. If you want to sidestep attacks more consistently, I'd also recommend the dodge perk. Tip number two is using sudden movements to bait out parries. A lot of the players in this game will panic if you make any sudden movements such as springing towards them, a sharp turn, or my personal favourite, jumping at them, and usually expect an attack to be following. This can sometimes bait people into parrying early, which can allow you to follow up with a quick counter attack within their recovery window. Now it goes without saying, this is a mind game, so it's not something you want to use too much, and it's certainly not consistent. However, it can lead into interesting scenarios, especially if you're dueling the same person over and over, because if they're then expecting you to just jump emptily at them, you can then mix it up and actually follow with an attack. Although, of course, it does come with its risks, they could just stab you, so yeah, be ready to defend. So tip number three is a direct counter to number two, and it's just being aware of the attack grunt. When a player attacks in Mordhau, there are three main phases to the attack animation. You have the wind up, which is the time it takes from you inputting the attack to getting to the next phase known as the release. The release is the part of the animation that's actually doing damage. And then after the release phase, you end up in the recovery phase, assuming you don't hit anything, which is the time it takes until you can input another attack. The wind up phase is the part where players can input feints and morphs to throw their opponents off. However, once they hit release, they have to commit to the attack. Now going back to an attack grunt, whenever an attacking player hits the release phase of their attack, their character will perform a little grunt. This is useful because it lets you know that your opponent is 100% committed to the attack they're currently performing, meaning once you hear the grunt, you can defend yourself appropriately. Now, of course, the grunt itself is not the timing you want to use for parries, as if they drag or accelerate their attacks, that can skew the timing. So it's still important to pay attention to what they're doing. However, this will allow you to deal with feints much more consistently. Tip number four is super helpful with dealing with shield users, as well as people who like to hug your face. And that is that it is possible to morph attacks into kicks. A lot of players don't seem to know this, because I don't think it was mentioned in the tutorial, but yes, it is possible to morph your attacks into kicks. Obviously, when fighting a shield user, if you go in for an attack, they'll most likely put their shield up. So a good mind game you can play with them is to run up to them, try to attack them, and then instantly morph into a kick. So they'll be less prepared to deal with it, but if it hits, it will also momentarily stun, meaning you can get in another attack if you're quick enough. Again, not one you want to use constantly as it can be punished pretty hard. However, it's really good for mixing up your play. Yeah. Oh, 
Now, tip number five is a little bit more advanced. However, I will preface this and say that this one helped me to improve a lot and I didn't even know it was possible until it was used against me. And that is combining feints and morphs with chambers. Now, this blew my mind when I first saw it happen, but if you chamber any attack, it can be a stab, it can be a slash. In the startup of that chamber, if you're quick enough, you can input a feint or a morph, just like with any other attack. This can mess up an opponent so much, and I've beat people who I would consider on my level or even a little bit above just by using this technique. It's super simple, literally just a feint or a morph after chambering, but honestly, even if an opponent does this to me and I know what they're doing, it still messes me up. So yeah, this is definitely something you're going to want to learn to use. However, just keep in mind that it does use up a ton of stamina to do. So be sure to keep an eye on how much you have left. And finally, probably the simplest tip on this list, but certainly the one that's going to make you a better player faster, is don't panic. This is super important. If you panic for even a second, your opponent can utilize tricks like the ones on this list and condition you into doing whatever they want to. The moment you begin panicking is the moment you lose. So keep a clear head and definitely just pay attention to what your opponent's doing. And as a general tip, the best way to practice all of these is to go onto the community dueling servers. It's better than frontline. Frontline is very uncontrolled, it's very random. Whereas in a 1v1, you can better practice your mechanics. But yeah, there you have it. That was six quick tips to improve as a player in Mordhau. If you guys enjoyed this video, do be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more Mordhau content on the channel, let me know down below. Anyway, happy crusading. This is Vest, signing off. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also, don't forget, you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.